All right, so let's head over to Sentry. Uh, let's go over to the documentation. And on the left-hand side, we're now going to see performance monitoring. Let's head on to getting started and then install and configure an SDK. And from here, well, we're going to start off with JavaScript and then we're going to do Python. But first step is installing the SDK. So yarn add npm install or cdn include and then sentry.init the DSN. And the only thing new here will be integrations, new npm integrations.tracing as well as traces sample rate to specify what percentage of traces that we want sent up to Sentry. You can see right here, this is where it's imported. So let's go on into the code and showcase this. So here we have sentry.init within my React app, my DSN, and then the, the integration, new APM integrations.tracing, and then tracing origins just to specify uh, which requests I want instrumented for tracing. And then in this case, for this demo, I want all transactions being sent up to Sentry. And then on the Python side, back to here, Python, pip install, import it, Sentry SDK.init, the DSN, and all you have to do on the Python side is trace the sample rate. So here is my Flask backend, import Sentry SDK, DSN, and then trace the sample rate right here. Now that we have the SDK wired up to send up transactions to Sentry, let's talk about what's going on under the hood. So here we have the distributed tracing documentation, which talks in depth about what tracing is, uh, what it's supposed to do, what it's not supposed to do, as well as maps out traces, transactions, and spans. So what's now happening is the SDK, as I mentioned, is shipping up transactions into Sentry. So let's go ahead and quickly define each of these. A trace represents the record of the entire operation that you want to measure or track. For example, a page load or an action within your application. So in our case, it's going to be a checkout. When a trace is going through multiple services, each one of these is called a transaction. So a transaction represents a call into each one of your services or microservices. Inside your microservices, you have a bunch of function calls and code executions. Each one of those is a span. So in our case, we're going to start off with the page load, which looks something like this. So it starts off in the browser, requests out to the backend, and then it'll connect out to the database server. And you can see how the spans are linked to various transactions and all of this constitutes one trace, that being a page load. And the second example we'll get into is checkout. 